This is Cappy, Rollo's tiny, easy to build bed slinger. Cappy was designed to be an approachable, simple project for beginners looking to get into DIY 3D printing. Unfortunately, it seems to have been mostly overshadowed by the much more popular Rook. Despite being intended for beginners, one thing that Cappy lacks is a proper build guide. And that's what I intend to fix today. Let's get started with the frame. The frame of a stock Cappy uses four 200mm and four 250mm long 2020 extrusions. Additionally, you need two L-type corner plates and two T-type corner plates, along with the printed feet. We're going to start with the bottom frame, which is built from two 200mm and two 250mm extrusions. The 250mm extrusions go along the y-axis, and the 200mm extrusions go on the x-axis. So the total footprint of the machine is 240mm by 250mm. The feet attach to the frame with M5x8 screws and T-nuts, and the rubber feet are attached with an M5x16 bolt that cuts its own thread into the printed parts. I'm using some extra extrusions to help hold everything together and make sure that the finished frame ends up square. Once everything is together, that's the bottom frame complete. The top frame goes together similarly with two 250mm extrusions and just one 200mm extrusion. The final 200mm extrusion will be used for our x-axis, but that step isn't for a while. Here we use two of the L-shaped corner plates to hold the frame together. These will be on the front of the finished machine. The T-plates are used to attach the upper frame to the base, but we won't do that until the y-axis is assembled. To assemble the y-axis, you will need two 250mm linear rods with bearings, the four printed rod holders, the motor mount, the y-idler, and also the y-bearing mounts. You'll also need more M5x8s and T-nuts to attach all of these parts to the frame. The bearing mounts each need four heat set inserts installed, and then the bearings for the rods must be press fit inside of them. This is supposed to be a very tight fit, so don't be afraid to give the bearings some force when you're installing them. First, attach the motor mount to the back, both the Y motor mount and the Y idler need to be positioned in the exact center of the frame. For the Y idler, I'm using a 20 tooth idler instead of the F695 bearings that are recommended. Either will work fine for this application though. And then attach the Y axis rods. The easiest way to do this is to attach the bed to the bearing mounts, slide the rods through, and then press the rod holders onto the end. If you can move the bed back and forth smoothly, then you'll know that everything is aligned properly and you're good to tighten down the rod holders. From there, screw the motor into the motor mount, put a pulley on the motor shaft, and you're ready to run your belts. I'm going to be using these LDO 1684 motors for this build, but basically any NEMA 17 motor will work. With the belt holder piece attached to the bed, you can zip tie the end of the belt around the screw and then run it around the rest of the loop. I had to just guess and check the position of the pulley on the Y stepper motor, and I ended up with it in this position here. Take care to pull the belt as tight as you can when first installing it, as you don't have a whole lot of room to tension on the motor mount itself. While the printer is upside down, it's a good time to install the mounts for the mainboard as well. The stock parts are designed for the MKS Monster 8, but I'm using a Fizek Spider, so I'm going to be using these parts instead. For Cappy, you only need a board with 5 stepper drivers, but these 8 driver boards are often around the same price, and they give you the option to upgrade the printer later on down the line. With everything run, the final belt setup looks like this, and you should be able to feel quite a bit of resistance when moving the bed now. If everything looks good, we can move on to the next step. Before we get to the next step, I want to take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay has all the tools to bring your ideas to life. Whether you're into electronics, prototyping, or just building cool stuff, PCBWay has everything you need. PCBs, PCB assembly, 3D printing, and even laser cutting and CNC machining services. They're truly a one-stop shop for all things fabrication. Better yet, they're celebrating the new year with an incredible deal. Up to 50% off PCBs, but only until January 12th. Be sure to check out PCBWay using my link in the description below, and thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Now that the y-axis is assembled, we can finally attach the two halves of the frame together. For this, we are using the two T-shaped corner plates from earlier, and you simply just bolt the two frame pieces together. 
The upper frame should be exactly in the middle of the bottom frame, which means a distance of 115 millimeters from the edge of the uprights to the edge of the bottom frame. Try to get this distance as accurate as possible for both sides, but what's more important than the exact distance is just that each side of the top frame is equal. That way your prints don't come out skewed. Okay, that's the frame complete, and we can move on to the x-axis now. For the x-axis, you will need the final 200mm extrusion, a 150mm MGN9C linear rail, a pulley, an idler, two linear bearings, another NEMA 17, and all of the required printed parts and hardware. These parts also require several heat set inserts, as well as the linear bearings which need to be pressed in. Be sure to do that now before assembling anything else. I find the best way to install everything is to pre-install the T-nuts on the M5 screws and then slide the 2020 into the part. This can be a bit tricky to align, but once it's all together, the assembly is rock solid. The motor mount is comprised of two parts, one of which bolts to the 2020 and one of which bolts to the motor. Make sure the part that bolts to the motor is secured well, as once it's installed, you won't be able to access all of the screw holes to tighten it to the motor. The motor part is simply bolted to the other using the heat set inserts that were previously installed. There's three screws to look out for here. The idler side of the x-axis is installed exactly the same way, with the T-nuts loaded onto screws and the whole assembly slipped onto the 2020. The idler is attached via one long M5 screw and a couple of printed spacers to keep it aligned with the rest of the belt path. You can now bolt the linear rail onto the front of the 2020 with M3x8 screws and some T-nuts. The X-carriage bolts onto the linear rail with four M3x6 screws. And make sure you have those heat set inserts in, otherwise you won't have anything to bolt your tool head to. Running the belt on X is a lot easier than on Y. Just insert the belt into the tensioner, push that part through the X-carriage and run the belt all the way around. And for the other end of the belt, you simply just make a loop and then insert a screw through that loop here on the carriage, and then carefully wrap a zip tie around the belt to secure it. Once everything is together, you can now use a screw to tension the x-axis belt. In retrospect, I should have cut my belt a little bit longer here so the tensioner block wasn't sticking out the side so much. But it doesn't hit anything or impact my travel on x, so honestly there's no issue with it like this other than looking a little bit funny. The Z-axis rods are secured between the gear mounts on the bottom and the Z-idlers on the top. With the rods in, the X-axis should be able to easily slide up and down, and you shouldn't feel any binding. For the Z-axis, you're going to need 60 tooth pulleys, 20 tooth pulleys, the belt loops, some F695 bearings, as well as metal shafts. At the time I was building, the build of materials still called for one brass rod, which you would then cut and sand down yourself. Now, however, that part has been replaced with dedicated 5mm steel shafts, which are far easier to work with. Press the F695s into the sides of the printed part. Make sure that you secure these pulleys onto the shaft with their grub screws. When all is said and done, the assembly should look like this. You will also need to keep the closed loop belt attached to the 60 tooth pulley while you're assembling everything together. Once you're done, make sure that everything rotates smoothly. Now we can install the Z motors on the underside of the printer. It's easiest to screw the Z motors to the mounts off the printer and then attach the entire assembly and slide it along the bottom of the frame to tension the closed loop belt. The belt doesn't need to be super tight here, just enough to properly mesh with the two pulleys. The approach for the other side is exactly the same. For the Z, you need to use smaller 34mm NEMA 17s, otherwise your mainboard won't fit between them. I'm using old Creality motors here, and these work just fine. We're almost done with the Z, all that's left to do is just to route the belts. For this, we're going to need our belts, as well as our Z tensioners, some F695 bearings, and of course, some hardware as well. The Z tensioners do need heat set inserts installed, so be sure to do that before continuing with the assembly. You can then attach the F695s to the tensioner with an M5 by 16 screw, just make sure not to tighten it too much. We still want the bearing to be able to spin freely. Now we can install some M3 screws into the heat set inserts on the side of the x-axis. The Z-belt will wrap around these screws. Wrap the belt around the bottom screw, and then carefully route it around the 20-tooth pulley at the bottom. Then wrap it up around the tensioner, and push that tensioner into the Z-idlers at the top of the frame. You don't want to push it in all the way here, leave a little bit of room for some tensioning later. After that, just wrap the end of the belt around the top screw and secure it in place with another zip tie. This process is identical for the other side, 
just make sure that your two Z belts are exactly the same length. The best way to do this is to remove the first belt right after you've routed it, and then cut the second one to the exact same length. Then reinstall both belts. Yes, it's a little bit annoying to do, but it ensures that you won't have any issues on your Z. With the motors installed and the gear ratio on Z, you should see that the x-axis doesn't fall down like it used to. With that done, we can move on to the final part of the build, the tool head. Cappy is designed to use the popular Dragon Burner tool head. Dragon Burner is an excellent choice for a machine like this, as it provides plenty of part cooling and also supports a ton of different extruder and hot end combinations. Since the assembly of the tool head largely depends on the hot end and extruder that you are using, I'm not going to be covering that in depth, but I do have a few general words of advice. First and foremost, this tool head has this little bump on the back, which will conflict with the x-axis carriage on Cappy. If you've already printed your tool head parts, you can just sand down this bump until the tool head attaches properly, but the best method is to get rid of it by modding the SDL file. You can either import the step into Fusion 360 and mod it there, or even just subtract a chunk of the SDL in something like Tinkercad to make it fit. The stock carriage only lets you attach the tool head at two points, but this isn't as big of a deal on a bed slinger compared to something like a Core XY. And that's really all the tips and tricks that I have for you here. I'm going to be running a bamboo hot end with the Sherpa Mini, and I think that's a pretty reasonable choice given the kinds of speeds that you can expect from a printer like this. That's all I have time for today. If you've gotten this far and need some help with the electronics and the clipper setup, then please don't hesitate to join Rolo's Discord and talk to some of us on there. And as always, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.